Hi guys, welcome back to my channel 32 Happy Teeth. Today we will be discussing mandibular major connectors. I have already posted a video on maxillary major connectors. You can go and check that video before this video and I will provide the link for that video in the description box as well as on the i button. Now let us start with the video. Coming to the types of mandibular major connectors. Broadly there are five types of uh, mandibular major connectors and they are lingual bar, sublingual bar, lingual plate, double lingual bar and labial bar. We will be dealing with every mandibular major connectors in detail. So let us start with the lingual bar. So the lingual bar is the most commonly used mandibular major connector and if you remember in the maxillary uh, video I told you that palatal strap is the most versatile uh, major connector used in the maxilla. Okay, So in the maxillary region it is palatal strap whereas in the uh, uh, mandibular region it is lingual bar. Okay, now let us move on to the requirements that you should uh, take care of before giving a lingual bar. Now coming to the requirement, it requires at least 8 mm of vertical space between the floor of the mouth and the gingival margins of the teeth. See, you can see that in this uh, picture, this is a patient's mouth. This is your gingival margin and this is the floor of the mouth. Okay, so we are measuring the, uh, the depth, okay, the vertical space or depth uh, between the gingival margin and the floor of the mouth if the space is 8 millimeter then it is a very good that is a green option go for lingual bar you can see that this is a similar picture but it, uh, they are measuring it on cast so if there is 8 millimeter of space you can go for lingual bar and this lingual bar is half pear shaped you must have seen pear in hindi we call it nashpati so it is half pear shaped suppose you cut a pear into half okay so and take that half in your hand this is your lingual bar how this lingual bar appears and the superior border of uh, the um, what do you say of the pear shaped lingual bar it is located below the gingival border okay suppose this is a gingival border see this is gingival margin and gingival border okay so the pear shaped lingual bar uh, its superior border must be below this gingival margin okay now we will see uh, the diagram of the lingual bar in the next slide see this is your lingual bar and the, this is the gingival margin and this is the floor of the mouth. So an 8 millimeter of space was present hence we went for lingual bar. And the lingual bar superior border is placed below the gingival margin and the gingival border. And where is lingual bar indicated? Yes, it is most widely in used but it is uh, indicated in Kennedy class 3 and its modification. Okay, and what is Kennedy the class 3? So if you haven't watched my video on Kennedy's classification and Applegate rules of Kennedy classification I have posted two videos regarding each topic you can go and watch that video on my channel I provide the link to both of these videos in my description box as well as on the i button okay now I'm uh, moving on to the indication so what was Kennedy class 3 as I told you in my video Kennedy class 3 is unilateral edentulous space which is bounded by natural teeth on both the sides okay so this is your Kennedy class 3 and it is indicated in Kennedy class 3 as well as its modifications okay so for a better understanding of the modifications and what Kennedy class 3 uh, I would recommend you to first go and watch those videos okay now moving on to its advantages and disadvantages so what are uh, the advantages of lingual bar the first is it is simple easy to design and easy to fabricate okay so it's very simple it's a simple uh, major connector easy to design and fabricate so it's quite easy now the second advantage is has minimal contact with the oral tissue as you saw this in the previous slide the lingual bar was like it was having very little contact with the oral tissues now no contact with teeth of course we saw it in the diagram there that there was no contact with the teeth and hence it won't lead to any sort of decalcification now moving on to the disadvantages the disadvantages of lingual bar are 
food entrapment and patient discomfort when placed over an undercut so of course if you are placing this lingual bar over an undercut so of course the patient will feel, will feel uncomfortable there will be food lodgement then if since the food will be entrapped it can lead to some sort of infection now this uh, bar cannot be used when tori is present of course if a mandibular tori is present which is usually present in the premolar region you cannot give uh, this lingual bar now it can also be not used in cases of insufficient vestibular depth or if it is thin and flexible okay now i have already discussed in the first slide introduction slide of lingual bar that there has to be a depth of 8 mm so of course if that condition is not met you cannot go for lingual bar so these were the advantages and disadvantages of lingual bar now let us move on to the next type of uh, major connector so see this is a sublingual bar okay now this sublingual bar is actually a modification of the lingual bar and i say before that lingual bar is half pear shaped whereas sublingual bar is kidney shaped okay so what is the difference pear shaped half pear shaped kidney shaped that is a lingual bar this is a modification of lingual bar now uh, as the name suggests sublingual hence uh, it is placed deeper into the anterior sulcus when adequate space is not available for lingual bar we have already discussed we just we just discussed in the disadvantages that if the prerequisite of 8 mm is not met we cannot go for lingual bar so what for that case for so in that cases you can go for sublingual bar okay so actually what are the three main points modification of lingual bar kidney shaped and if you don't have the adequate space to give a lingual bar go for sublingual bar now move on to the lingual plate now first learn about the shape lingual plate is pear shaped lingual bar half pear shaped sublingual bar kidney shaped and lingual plate is a full pear shaped okay now the superior border it is extending onto the lingual surfaces of the teeth as a thin solid plate of metal this is very much evident in this diagram you can see that the superior border of the lingual plate see it is a lingual plate it is not a bar it is a plate so of course it will be wide and it will be made up of thin um, plate of metal so it is extending onto the lingual surfaces of the teeth and uh, the superior border are also scalloped okay they are scalloped why are they scalloped so that they can have an intimate contact with the cingula okay and knife edge margins also so uh, what is the superior how the superior body is like scalloped intimate contact with the cingula and also knife edge margins this is very much evident in this diagram you can appreciate all of that knife edge margin superior body scalloped intimate contact you can you can see all of that in this picture now this lingual plate it reduces the wedging effect on teeth since it has such an intimate contact it is scalloped it has knife edge margin it is very similar to the shape of everything like of, of our oral tissues hence it reduces the wedging effect on teeth and also it prevents food from packing into the area because it is having an intimate contact there is no gap so that the food can go and lodge so there will be no food entrapment and the food entrapment was a disadvantage in case of yes lingual bar okay so the anterior lingual plate must always be supported at each end by rests see this is your lingual plate and this lingual plate is supported by the rests see this is your rest this is your rest on both the sides you are giving rest so both of these rest should be given when using a lingual plate and this rest should not be placed no further posterior than the mesial fossa of first premolars see this is your central incisor lateral incisor canine and first premolar so first premolar mesial fossa so this uh, what do you say this rest is not should not be placed uh, further than the mesial fossa of the first premolar okay so the anterior lingual plate must always be supported at each end by rests no further posterior than the mesial fossa on the first premolar whether indirect retention is needed or not it doesn't matter whether you require indirect retention in your lingual plate or you don't you have to give rests and that press should not be placed anterior lingual plate in case of anterior lingual plate it should not be placed any further than the mesial fossa of first premolar now let us move on to the diagram see this this is a picture of a lingual plate you can see that the lingual plate is extending up to the cingula okay and it is also extending downwards so this is a, a cross section of lingual plate now let us move on to its indications 
so the first indication is when lingual frenum is high or space available for lingual bar is insufficient of course when there isn't enough space for lingual bar or if there is a high lingual frenum you can go for lingual plate as it will be high enough and it will be placed on the cingula thus it won't be having uh, like it won't interfere with the uh, high lingual frenum now the second indication is kennedy class 1 with excessive vertical resorption if there is a greater amount of vertical resorption and that is a class uh, that arch is kennedy class 1 kennedy class 1 was yes bilateral edentulous space distal extension cases so in those cases also you can go for uh, lingual plate and also for stabilizing periodontally weakened teeth ab suppose the teeth are weak and you have to give rpd so this lingual plate it will have an intimate contact with the teeth then it there will be rest present hence this will provide more uh, support more stability addition to that weak teeth now when future replacement of one or more anterior teeth is predicted suppose you are providing a major connector and you are planning in the and you are planning a mandibular major connector and, and you are, suppose you are going to give an rpd and you are planning a mandibular major connector and in that um, same case you also have to you think that you might need to replace one or two teeth maybe in the upcoming months or uh, in the upcoming some days so what will you do yes you will choose lingual plate not lingual bar or anything else you have to choose lingual plate and also if there is presence of in inoperable to right of course because since the lingual frenum is high i so this will inter won't interfere with the high lingual frenum same is the case with tori the tori will be present it is placed high upon the teeth so uh, no interference whatsoever to the tori and the last indication is prevent supra eruption of mandible anteriors in retrognathic jaws by placement of incisal rest okay suppose there is a retrognathic jaw uh, okay and is if there is a supra eruption of mandible anteriors so in a retrognathic jaw if supra eruption of mandible anteriors is happening or if you think that it will happen you can place incisal rests in this um, uh, lingual plate and you can prevent the supra eruption so this was all about indications now let us move on to the advantages and disadvantages so what is the advantages of using a lingual plate it is most rigid and provides good support and stabilization we have discussed all of these three points in our indications only that it stabilizes periodontally weakened teeth since it has an intimate contact so it provides good support and it is rigid and it also provides indirect retention with the rests on the premolars of course you are providing rests on the premolars you will be getting an indirect retention better patient comfort and phonetics of course it won't be interacting it won't be like uh, interfering with the inoperable tori or high lingual frenum so you won't be compromising with the patient's phonetics or even their comfort disadvantages are soft tissue irritation of course since it is large it is covering a major portion it can cause some bite or some it can cause some form of soft tissue irritation and also because uh, extensive coverage of teeth is present so it can lead to uh, decalcification but this wasn't the case of lingual bar because it wasn't having any contact any sort of contact with your teeth so no decalcification but this is not the same in lingual plate it has a contact it can cause decalcification now with this we will be moving on to our next mandibular major connected that is double lingual bar now the double lingual bar is since the name how the name suggests double lingual bar so there are two lingual bars so the lower bar is very similar to lingual bar and it is pear shaped okay we learned that lingual bar is half pear shaped and lingual plate is pear shaped so the lingual bar that is the lower one this one it is pear shaped and the upper bar that is this one it is half oval shaped so the upper bar this upper bar this is half oval shaped and it is 2 to 3 mm high and 1 mm thick so what is the thickness of the upper bar 1 mm and what where is it placed how high is it placed it is 2 to 3 mm in height uh, so this uh, upper bar is 2 to 3 mm in height and it is 1 mm in thickness half oval shaped whereas the lower bar is pear shaped similar to lingual bar now both of these two bars are joined by minor connectors and these minor connectors where are they placed they are placed between canine and premolars so the upper and the lower lingual bars are joined to each other by minor connectors that are placed between canine and premolars and the rests placed at each end of the upper bar 
is no posterior than the mesial fossa of premolars very similar to the lingual plate uh, lingual plate rests that the anterior lingual plate rest should not be placed uh, no further uh, to the mesial fossa of the first premolar similarly the rest placed at each end of the upper bar shouldn't be placed no further than the mesial fossa of the first premolars now let's move on to the next slide now take a look on both of these diagrams and see where the rests is given see this is your upper bar which is half oval 2 to 3 mm in height and 1 mm in thickness this is your lower bar which is similar to lingual bar pear shaped and both of them are connected by minor connectors and where is the rest present in case of the upper lingual bar yes it is present on the mesial force of the first premolars this same thing is also evident in this cast okay so now you got to understand how is uh, the lingual bar upper lingual bar the lower lingual bar and where the rest are present now move on to our next slide now we know how lingual bar is but where is it indicated yes it is indicated when a lingual plate in otherwise indicated but axial alignment of anterior teeth entails excessive block out okay so suppose if there is a case and it is an ideal case for lingual plate but the anterior teeth's axial alignment isn't proper and in that case you need a lot amount of block out suppose uh, you can uh, you can think of crowding case okay this is the case you think okay fine i can go for lingual plate no issue but you see that the axial alignment of the teeth is not proper that is there is crowding present then what will you do you will have to make a lot you will have to consider a lot of blockers so what will you do you will have to go for double lingual bar and also if there is any sort of periodontal disease in that case also you have to um, use a double lingual bar and also when diastemas wide diastemas are present in lower anteriors suppose if there is wide diastemas huge diastemas huge spacings present in the anteriors lower anteriors then also you should consider double lingual bar now let us move on to the advantages Achha, now before moving on to the advantages and disadvantages I want to discuss one more point what if there is uh, a case of gingival recession or if there is diastema or if there is any space between uh, present between these teeth in the anterior regions what will you do and if you and also if you want to give the lingual plate you have to give the lingual plate and all of these days gingival recession or spacing or diastema what should you do yes what will you do you will do a cut back or step back designing of the plate so that the metal the metal won't be visible otherwise this will uh, what do you say compromise the aesthetic of the patient and the patient won't uh, you won't get a better patient compliance so in case of gingival recession spacing the anteriors cut back or step back of the plate can be done to prevent the visibility of the metal you can see that this is the cut back design or you can see step back taking a step back or cutting a portion so that is cut back or step back you can see that this is your um, and lingual plate this is making an intimate contact a scalloped margin um on this teeth then it is uh, then you are giving a step back or cut back design then uh, you are going to the next teeth you are doing the same then to the next teeth, the next teeth doing the same so this is how you give a cut back design and in this case there was um, it seems to have a spacing so in case of spacing you gave a cut back design let us now let us move on to the next slide so the advantages of uh, this double lingual bar is good indirect retention and horizontal stabilization and also natural stimulation and what are the disadvantages of course there are since there are two lingual bars and there is uh, the lower lingual bar we have also discussed that the lingual bar has this uh, disadvantage of food entrapment of course the same problem here also and also because there are two double bars the patient might get annoyed because uh, of this now coming on to the labial bar so what is this labial bar this labial bar is similar to lingual bar okay labial bar and lingual bar are similar to each other and they both are half pear shaped lingual bar is also half pear labial bar is also half pear but as the name suggests it is not present in the lingual uh, side as we have we have been discussing till now instead it is placed on the labial bar labial side okay see this is your lingual bar okay and it is present on the lingual side but labial bar is present on the facial uh, aspect or the buccal aspect and it is greater in height 
thickness and length than the lingual bar when you consider the length height and thickness of the lingual bar in all of these three dimensions labial bar is um, greater than that and it is placed across the labial or buccal mucosa now let us move on to its indications it is indicated in malposed and lingually inclined teeth so see if a teeth a lower anterior teeth is lingually inclined or it is malposed so since it is lingually inclined they won't be uh, like uh, better placement of lingual bar it will cause a problem in placing a lingual bar or even a lingual plate you cannot place it because there is a lingual alignment so what will you do you will go for labial bar and also if there is large inoperable tori of course lingual plate can uh, can be placed uh, without interfering with the tori but what if it is very large and you cannot um, like uh, do away with lingual plate then you have to consider labial bar and the third indication is severe and abrupt lingual tissue undercuts if there are severe and very uh, like uh, haphazard sort of lingual tissue undercuts then also you cannot go for uh, lingual major connectors then also in that case also you have to consider labial bar and what are its advantages of course when lingual tissue do not support the prosthesis design it's very obvious if uh, there isn't any like some sort of problem on the lingual side then only you will consider labial bar otherwise why would you consider that disadvantages of course it is present on the buccal on the facial aspect it's an aesthetic distortion of lower lip yes it is a possibility and yes patient discomfort is going to be a major factor because it is present on the anterior aspect of your mouth so this was all about mandibular major connectors i have completed both major connectors maxillary as well as mandible in detail in my two videos this one and the one which i posted previously uh, i would recommend you to go through both of these videos so that you can understand major connectors in a better manner and i hope this video was helpful for you and if it was so do not forget to hit the like button and share this video with your friends who are struggling with understanding of this topic and also do not forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that whenever i post a new video you get a notification of it otherwise you will be missing such educational videos in the future and one more thing before ending this video i conduct uh, weekend quizzes on my telegram channel so do not forget to join my telegram channel i'll provide the link in the description box and every weekend on saturday and sunday i conduct quizzes which is related to neat mds so that you can uh, benefit from those quizzes okay till then take care bye bye